the Olight O-Bulb I reviewed on this channel before, and I always thought it was a competent product, but it was not quite there to where I would use it in my personal life every day. But now, with this new version, the Obol Plus, it has gotten so good and fixed all my niggles that I had that I have now got three of them and they're going in every single one of my bedrooms. Welcome back to the channel, folks. The Obol Plus has, as I said, solved all the problems I had with the previous versions and it's so good that I'm gonna be using it now. Uh, the kids have already claimed which color they want and I know which one's going in my bedroom. Let me tell you that this thing goes on. Oh, first off, this is an iterative product, meaning that they had several versions before this. It's gotten a little bigger and then a little smaller and they added app support and they changed the app. So, so it's gone through some things. So if you think you know what Obolb is, take a look with fresh eyes because it's changed. And I definitely think that this product has reached maturity and it is something that I'm going to widely recommend to people now. Uh, it, it's very good now. So uh, let's take a look at what makes it different from past versions. And also note that it goes on sale uh, in about a day here on the 18th of this month. Uh, so about a day, day and a half after I release this video. So this video is going to have three parts. I'm going to talk about the product what's improved on it, what's better than the last version I reviewed, which was called the Obulb Pro. And uh, that's a little bit kind of confusing to the naming, I think, because to me, Pro sounds better than Plus, but this Plus one-ups the Pro in every way. It's a better product. Don't worry about the Pro. Pro is now gone. Plus is here to stay. So let's, uh, so again, back to the three parts. So we're going to talk about the uh, differences. We'll talk about the hardware. Then we'll talk about the software, the app control. And then in the third part of the video, we're going to talk about the sale, the Olight sale that's coming up. And if you're one of those people that doesn't like Olight marketing, then yeah, just, just turn off my video at that point. But you know what? I suspect that a lot of you know that that is the secret to buying Olight products is you buy them at the sales because that's when they reduce the prices that's when they give you the free swag so uh stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll talk about some of the products that are coming up what's going on sale and what i recommend and i'll show you uh the new warrior 3s color which i think is literally fire and yes i'm misusing that term the same way the kids do yeah, I guess it's figuratively fire. All right, so let's take a look first at the Obol Plus and what makes it better and uh, why it's better than the last version. So it's a little bit bigger, uh, which, I don't know, doesn't matter to me. It's just going to sit on my table. It's not dramatically bigger. I mean, look at my hands here. It's, it's a small device. But um, I will tell you this, though. Right off the bat, the way you turn it on and off is so <laughs> much better. On the older version... There is a switch built in the bottom, and so when you're pushing on the top, because that's what you're supposed to do, push on the top, when you do that, you're really pushing through the whole device against the thing on the bottom, and it's squishy, and you don't really know if you hit it or not, and you got to kind of firmly touch it. it it's, it's an awkward th affair, and if you put it on something that's too flexible, it doesn't even register, so I know a lot of people had taken to picking it up and clicking it on the bottom, and you know, that's kind of awkward because you're not supposed to click it. You're supposed to tap it. Well, the new version has a electrostatic button on the top. I don't know if we can see that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's coming out. There's a little kind of on off, faint gray on off symbol right there. Anyways, so you tap it on the top. Anyways, so you tap it on the top and one tap turns it on. Two taps turns it off. Very easy to use controls. I, I dislike the controls on this one. I, I don't want to go on and on about it, but just suffice to say that this one, well, all right, I'll talk a little bit about it. So first off, if you turned it on, okay, there was no way to control the brightness. All right, whatever you had, that's what it was. The brightness was controlled exclusively through the app, so that kind of stunk because you had to have an app to control it. I mean, I don't want, listen, apps are great, and sometimes I wanna use apps, but I want every control I can do available through taps as, as, as well, or at least most of them, right? So that was a huge oversight. I, I 
Didn't like that when I reviewed this product. Secondly, when you go to turn it off, you can tap and hold and it turns off, right? So you tap once, it turns on, and then tap and hold. I kind of feel like to tap on and hold off kind of is weird to me. Like to me, if I'm tapping on, I think I should tap off as well. And so I would always do this and then end up, and I, you can't even tell because it's so dim right now, but it's in a color mode. It's in green and there's blue. There's So I, I'm, I'm tapping and eventually you get through all of these color modes and off. Now you might say, why are those color modes so dim? Because it's set dim right now and I'm going to go and I have to go in the app to set them up. Oh, it's kind of a mess. So you can see why it's cute, but I didn't like it. Okay, so let's set that aside. We're done talking about that. All right, now let's talk about the plus. First off, electroselect button. You just you just tap it, right? You just tap. It's no big deal. It's not like the smash anymore. If you want to uh, turn it off, two taps. So it's tap on, two taps off. Now you might think, well, you just said you like tap on, tap off. So why two taps? Well, because you're going to tap it on, and every subsequent tap will go through its various modes, and it's got these glorious color modes, folks. Watch this. Oh, it's a little dark. Okay, so here, let me go. Actually, no, let me not go to the app. Let me show you the new feature. Tap and hold. There you go. So this is called uh, Campfire or Fire, I think. And you can see it kind of looks like flames going up the side. Let's tap through some of these. I'm not going to tell you all the names for these, but you can see how gorgeous these modes are with their colors. Here, let me turn my lights down a little bit. Let's see if we can see these colors a little better. And that I think that's called fireworks. If you look, it just looks like explosions of color all over it. But anyways, I'm not going to go through all of them. Just note that there's a lot of them. There's like, I don't know, approximately 20 of them or something like that. But I want to show you that when it's white... If you double tap, 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 it goes off and you don't have to go through all those modes. So just think that if I'm tapping it, one tap turns it on, two taps turns it off. And while it's on, one long tap ramps it down and then all the way up. So there's full brightness control right from the interface. Excellent. I've already shown you the taps. I'm showing you how this all works and how easy it is. Now, let's talk about charging really quickly because that's the last part of the hardware here. If you uh, notice, there is an MCC charging port on the bottom. It comes with a charging cable. It actually comes with one of the black ones now. So it's black like that. This is an old blue one I have. But uh, the MCC charging cable is flat, so you can literally charge and let sit on the cable all the time if you want. Now, that's convenient, but that would keep it full, so I don't think it's necessarily a good idea. I think the best way to do this is to charge it up, kind of let it go low over time, and then charge it again, because when batteries sit 100%, that actually does damage to them. These are both around 200 lumens, but you know what? This one is dead on 200 lumens, and this one's like 170 something lumens, so it is a little brighter, okay? But here's the other big thing. It gets dimmer, way dimmer. Uh, at 1% over here, or whatever the lowest was, I, I think the app actually said like 3%, it was weird. But the lowest it could go, this thing is about five times brighter than the new one. So the new one is excellent if you like a very low mode. And the last thing I'm going to say about that before we get back to the app is that I also did a measurement of the color when it was dark in here, and I have it saved here. And this guy, if you take a look, it's, um, let's get it without a little reflection, reflection here, it's almost exactly incandescent. Incandescent would be 2700K, so it's almost exactly that. And you see it's slightly rosy. That's beautiful for at night. Gorgeous. Uh, let me show you the CRI here. You can see that it is not high CRI, and you can see the R value is a little low, but just believe me when I tell you that on something like this, you're going to want efficiency over CRI, and you might, you might say, okay, that I'm calling BS on that, but I'm telling you right now 
that people blow out of proportion how important CRI is when tint and CCT, if those two things are met, trust me, you're going to like it way more than if it's high CRI and green or high CRI and too cool or too warm. So this thing matches the beauty of incandescent lighting and it's efficient to boot. I, I'm going to stake my claim on that. I've, I've been saying that a lot. People like to argue with me, but I'm telling you, man, I've been doing this for a while. If you get the right tint, oh, it's perfect. Oh, one last thing I want to say is they also dialed it in a little better. On the older old bulb, on this one, the Pro, it was almost 2,500, so it was a little too warm, and it was about almost 15 to 20 points rosier, which is almost distracting. So this is slightly rosy, but very neutral. Uh, you, know, you know, almost neutral. It's only about 20 points off. This one was like 40 under. It was a little too rosy and a little too warm for my liking. Okay, let's take a look at the app. Okay, we're in the app. So, to pair the app is pretty simple. Uh, you can read the instructions, but when you first get it out of the box, it won't respond to any of your clicks until you slap on the charger on the bottom. As soon as it gets power and it starts charging, then it'll respond to clicks. To get it into pair mode, you're going to tap the top five times while it's on. So you turn it on, and then you go tap, 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 you know, five times, and it'll start flashing green. Once it's green, you can pair it. Okay, so in the app here, you've got the old bulb listed. Now, I wanna show you that there's a little on off button here, and I think this might be a bug, but from this device list, you can tap the little on off and it responds and turns on, but then it doesn't show that it's now on. Maybe if I refresh, actually, this just popped in my head. Oh, now it shows it's on, and now I can turn it off. Okay, I solved it, that was the bug. See, it does not respond because it thinks it's on, and it, it, yeah, so you gotta refresh, and now knows it's off, and then you can turn it on. Okay, so good to know. So if your house full of these things, hit refresh, you'll get the curtain state, then you can toggle in. Okay, good to know. Now, when you go into the app, there is basically white and color. On white here, you see I'm at 100% right now, and I can easily touch and pull this down. Now, it's not dynamically changing until I lift my finger. When I lift my finger, then it changes. But you can also just tap, okay? So you can tap all over. And it is stepless, from one to 100%, like every little difference is seen. I didn't notice any big chunks here, so I was getting 100 variations of lighting, which is great. Um, I also should point out at the top here that you can see that it says 68%. Well, when it shipped to me, it was, I think, 30% or maybe 25%, it was kinda low. But I put it on the puck for only about 20 minutes. It shot up to 70%. I've been using it for a couple hours now. It's only gone down like 2%. So I knew that from the other old bulbs. They're very efficient and they're designed to run like over a day. Okay. Now, obviously it depends on what, you know, brightness you have it at and stuff, but at reasonable brightnesses at night, they run for a long time. If you have it very low, like as nightlight, expect it to run weeks. Okay, so uh, yeah, get to uh, the voltage right there. That voltage, by the way, doesn't change super rapidly. Sometimes you have to jump out and refresh, but yeah, the voltage is right there. The percentage is right there. Now at the bottom here, you have uh, low, medium, and high. Just easy, fast, but you could use this one up here. All right, so that's white. Do you have control over the CCT or tint of this white? Nope, it's just incandescent. To be honest, I prefer that. I really do. Um, every LT1 Lantern I have, and on this other one, you could go into a color mode and kind of start picking colors, and it just became like Pandora's box. It's like, I never was satisfied with what I was picking, but I was always trying to get it right, and it was just frustrating. So I kind of like that they just locked you down into a warm white that is beautiful, and it's just like, I can just accept that. <laughs> okay, it's warm white, I like it, beautiful, great, let's go. Now, on the color tab here, you get all these color modes. I, I guess I left it on flashing red, but let's go to flame. So you got flame right now, and you can adjust the uh, you know brightness on the flame on here, just and, and by the way, it's independent of the white. So if the white is bright and you go to color, the color will stay at six. You see how they're independent of each other? So that's a cool thing. 
And there's all these different things, like Aurora and Colorful and, and Firefly, which looks like little, like, you know, fireflies flittering all around. And pretty much most of them are animated, not all of them, but some of them are pretty interesting, like Dream here. Let me go and turn it up now, get it a little brighter so you can see it. Dream, if you look at it, it kind of like draws in concentric circles. I don't know, it's it's kind of interesting. I hope, I hope this is showing up on the video. It's an interesting effect. So um, a lot of these are pretty interesting. This one is kind of bubbling all over with color. It's kind of an interesting look. But anyhow, uh, a couple of these are static, like Sunset just has a kind of a beautiful sunset look to it. But you know what? It's interesting is the look is beautiful, but it also projects a really beautiful color on the walls. I, I it, it really gave it a nice kind of pink moment color, which I liked. So there you go. These are all kind of really great presets. No, you cannot set up your own. And again, I'm going to argue I like that. I, I think that the interfaces, when you try to set up your own, are always tragic. They feel like they're giving you something, and you don't get much out of them. What I do like is the ones that are built in are very good. They're nice. They uh, aesthetically are pleasing. Uh, they're different. Um, and you know what? The only one that is clunky and not really advanced looking is Red Flash. And, you know, I could totally see how somebody would want one of these as a red flashing light. I don't know why, but somebody out there needs a red flashing light, and now you got it. Okay, so that is colors in a nutshell. So, okay, so that is colors in a nutshell. Now let's talk about a couple advanced features of this app, and then we'll get on to the sale. Okay, there's now a mode where you can start with the app, and it'll actually play colors to the music. I'm not going to demonstrate it while I'm recording here, but I will turn it on and just, you can see that it's changing colors as I talk. So imagine if there was music, right? Okay. Now that's Oboe Plus uh, Rhythm mode or, or music mode. Now there's this other mode over here where you can start planning action. So there's a countdown timer and you can do it in seconds all the way up to like hours because it'll go over 60 minutes. Okay. So that's awesome. You, so you can set up, you know, very specifically with the app here. Remember, I told you there is a sequence you can tap on top to make it do timer function on the old without the app. So that's great too. Now, also want to point out that there's this thing called Whack-A-Mole. And when you turn this on, it literally will light up at random times and you're supposed to whack it. So I assume if you have a few of them, well, I do, but I haven't done it yet, you can play a Whack-A-Mole game. Now, to get out of the whack-a-mole uh, mode, you have to tap five times on the top to enter what would be the pairing mode, but that will get you out of whack-a-mole mode while it's in it. There's also a factory light mode restore down here if you mess things up, but I also want to show you one other thing that I think is interesting, and that is, and that is, where is it? Ah, scene. Okay, so down here. If you jump out of the O-Bulb itself, right? Because I was in here. You come back out to the main list. There's this thing called Scene. Now, I haven't done much with this, but I was noticing that you can create scenes. And if you look, there's some pretty complicated stuff here, okay? Like you can schedule them to turn on and off at certain times a day. But check this out. You can do a launch to run, and you can script things, Okay, now I haven't done much about this, so, and this video would be so long if I actually did this, so I'm not going to, but I want to point out that one thing I noticed right away is you can tell one of your old bulbs or many of them to do certain actions when things are happening, and one of them I noticed is when the battery percentage is at a certain level or below a certain level, so you can have this thing warn you when it's at like the last 20% of its battery by turning red or flashing red. So awesome, right? Okay, cool. So I just want to point out that's there. But again, I haven't played with it a lot and that would be a lot to talk about. So I'm done with that. All right, let's talk about the last part of this video, which is the sale because you're going to want to buy one of these things, right? Okay, so here we go. Let's go to the website and 
the sale starts on the 18th in about, as I said, you know, a little over 24 hours. I want to point out that they've got a few things on sale right now that I think are stellar products. I think one of the best flood and throw lights on the market right now is this Marauder Mini. This thing, I love it. I think it's, I think it's phenomenal. Okay, you got your flood right there. You got your throw. I mean, it's great. I, I can't see enough about it. I got a full review of this thing, which I'll link right here right now if you want to see it. I, I, I really stand behind this light. Now, some people say that it is a little pricey, but check this out. Don't get it for 200 right? Get it for 139 on the sale. So there you go. Um, the bulb itself, the plus, is they say that it's normally going to be 70 bucks, and I believe that, but during the sale, you're going to get it for less than $49. And each one of them comes with a charging cable. I love this charging cable. I really do. The only complaint I hear about the charging cable is, oh, it's proprietary. Oh, what if I lose the cable? Guys, I got so many of these cables. Every time I buy one of their products, it comes with one. And, you know, now I've bought three more with the O-Bulbs. So, I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, so get some free uh, cables. And uh, I want to come down here and point out that another one of my favorite products is actually the Perrin 2 Mini. I think the Perrin 2 Mini is an excellent lightweight headlamp. Uh, I got a video on that too, so you can look it up if you want. Honestly, if you want something that doesn't, you can wear it for hours and it just doesn't even feel like it's there, the Perrin 2 Mini is excellent. And you can see that you can get it for like 45 bucks right now, okay? I would be remiss if I didn't finish the video out by telling you that one of my favorite lights of all time as as evidenced by the fact that I have several modded ones right here in front of you, is the Warrior 3S. I love this light. For a 21700 light, it is so lightweight and actually relatively compact. For a 21700, oh, it's, it's a phenomenal. And the feature set, I've made several videos on this. Not videos just about how it works out of the box, but I made videos about swapping it, I made videos, an argument for it being what I said was the best EDC on the market. Now, it's really big, but oh my gosh, the throw, the output, the UI, love it. So I've modified both of these, but you know what? On camera right now, I'm going to open up here the new color that they have. This one's unmodified, and you know what? I'm going to leave it unmodified. I'm going to leave it as the SST... 70 sorry sft 70 that it is well you know olight doesn't say it's an sft 70 but i mean we're pretty sure that it is so here we go look at that out get that out okay oh look at that look at that color guys look at this oh that thing is so wicked that red that deep beautiful shiny crimson into the black Oh, I tell you, I thought this thing was amazing. And this is, this is called fire. This is the element fire, but I never felt it really invoked fire to me. This invokes fire to me. Man, so you can see the little emblem there. They say it's fire, but I, I, I don't think so. Now, I'm going to tell you that I put XHP 50s in here, high CRI ones at 4,000. And so I'm going to turn this one on. You're going to see it's cool white. And you can see it's throwier, right? The SFT70 is a throwier emitter than the SHP50 is. Uh, and I love the warmth of you know the 4500K here. I love the high CRI. The tint's pretty darn good. But you know what? If you want sure output, efficiency, and throw, just stay with the SFT in there. Yeah, it's cool white. But, I mean, if you want a thrower... Such a great emitter. Uh, I, I felt bad when I pulled the SFT out of here. But you know what? Now I'm going to have one of each. So problem solved. All right, folks. Um, if you stuck with me this long, you are definitely a fan of my channel. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying here. And you know, guys, I never did this for fame or fortune, right? I always did this because I knew that people would want to know this information. So... Uh, if you have been thinking about getting one of these Olight products, now's the time. Uh, make sure you sign up right on the day. Oh, by the way, did you know that you don't even have to buy anything? Did you know that? If you just go to Olight, 
and just log in on the day, they send you a free keychain light. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, I think there might be a minimum for free shipping. So I guess that's the trick. They tried to get you to buy something already, but that's the thing. If you buy something, you meet the minimum, then you get the free keychain light. So it is, it is a free keychain light. All right, guys, I will see you. I'm just rambling at this point, but I will see you in the next video.